I want to uh, jump from there to, you know, one of the superstar companies you worked for. You know, a lot of people are uh, excited to hear about, you know, your time with uh, your three years with FireEye. Uh, you moved up pretty quickly to chief security strategist. And I want to eventually talk about the steps you took along the way to get there. But uh, first of all, what do you, what did you do as a chief security strategist? You know, we want to know about um, interesting job titles that people are aspiring to. What was your day to day work like life, you know, work like as a chief security strategist? What were your tasks? Yeah, so I made my whole career at Mannion and then FireEye because Mannion ended up actually being acquired by FireEye mm -hmm. um, through just being able to combine really quick engineering iterations and being able to push out products with a very small set of resources. Um, so the reason why I, I rose so quickly within the organization was that I could, uh, you know, come up with a new idea or a thing that we really needed in an existing department. And, you know, Mannion is a, is a, is a company that sells, sells software. So if we were able to come up with like a new product or an existing enhancement, an existing product and build it with very limited resources, sometimes it was just me. And then that would net out, you know, a new product line, new source of revenue, then that's something that the company is going to reward over and over again. And I was so good at that, that we ended up really building like an engineering strike team around me. So I would get like three or four people that, you know, I handpicked and we would sit down and we would be the team that you would call upon if let's say we had a huge partnership and we needed to have, there was a technology component to it and okay, we're going to be doing the, you know, the whole press event three months from now, Jason, you, you're starting from zero, let's get it done. And so that would be my job. It's like, okay, we're going to figure out what this partnership means from a technological perspective. We're going to get all that technology done. And we're going to be able to do it faster than anyone else in the organization can do it. So my whole thing was like trying to be as nimble as possible, apply agile methodology, uh, because you know a lot of the things that I learned in tandem with my cybersecurity skills was software engineering. I really loved building web applications and things like that. And those were skills combined with my love for security, combined with some of the executive training that I had, those are all assets that I was able to leverage together where I didn't need like a lot of people around me to be able to build something that really moved the needle within the company. And they were able to see that and, and they kept throwing opportunities at me and, you know, we kept on delivering and that was really uh, where I ended up uh, finally reaching chief security or strategist at, at the, at the organization. So uh, it's, it's interesting because they gave me that title because it was a, cool title to have, but they really didn't know what to do with me in terms of okay. like layering me into an existing department. I really wanted to be independent and uh, focus on problems that I knew I could really move the needle on. Um, and they were afforded me that opportunity because obviously there was a huge benefit for them. But over time, I realized that I'm doing a lot of the work here. I think I could probably do this on my own. And that's when I really started thinking about striking off on my own and, and you know, founding Collide and things like that. But um, that's, that's why I was in that role specifically. Yeah. Can you talk about how your, your working methods in a, in a solo situation versus in a team like that? Like what, how did you sort of find out that, uh, being independent, you know, sort of afforded you more freedom and what were, what were the sort of like benefits and, and disadvantages of, of sort of like a team function versus a solo function like this? Yeah. So, um, what's really nice when you're working independently is that, you have control over really the vision, how that vision actually plays out in terms of how it's implemented from a technology perspective. And then, you know, if you're, if you're good at coding, um, you have the ability to actually make that thing come to life. So I'm not perfect at all of those things, but I knew enough of them where I could get an idea from, you know, my head down to paper, do a mm -hmm. formal presentation in front of leadership, and then actually say, all right, I don't need any resources to actually get this to the next level. I don't need anything. And like, that's so low risk for them. Like they'll let me uh, really kind of go after any R and D project. And then boom, we have something that is probably 80% of the where, way there in terms of, is this shippable to a customer? Right. And then we would just, you know, call upon two or three additional engineers, take it the final 20%. But that's a, that really was a culmination of, of my entire life skills, like all coming together. Um, and that's the thing that I would say to folks who are trying to make sense out of my story. Like, how does this apply to me? is that when you enter a burgeoning field like cybersecurity, it's really important that you try to draw upon unrelated talents that may not be exactly the right fit for being okay. a security analyst. And can you actually add a new superpower to the organization they have because you have this extra skill? And because even today, I would agree this is true, like 
cybersecurity and infosec, there's still burgeoning fields. There's probably a lot that you can do by bringing in another skill set, whether that's graphic design, whether that's you know marketing, you know whatever it is, mm-hmm. you can be a support person to take the folks that really want to get their hands dirty every day and make them smarter and better. And that's why I really gravitated towards building products because, you know, while I, I did this stuff, you know, as a kid and I really liked reverse ma- engineering malware, there was always someone better than me at it. Mm-hmm. They would be able to do it 10 times as fast or they were even more passionate than me. And I realized that I got more out of it building tools for them to make them more powerful and smarter and better um, than for me to try to compete with them or assist them. Like that was my superpower that I could add. And that's what naturally led me to joining companies like Mandy and that have a whole product organization. I knew I would do well there. And that would be my advice to the folks out there is think about the things that really make you special and that you're passionate about. And can you come up with a way of combining that plus InfoSec together and really be a unique character in the, in the organization? New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things cyberwork.